All right, so tonight uh, we're remembering Mac Pritchard. So, and tonight our presenter, once again, is Randy Hedgepath. Randy has been a state naturalist for 12, going on 13 years, um, and an employee of the state uh, as a park ranger for 25 years. Um, he has served as a ranger naturalist at the South Cumberland Radnor Lake State Park. He was appointed state naturalist for Tennessee uh, State Parks in uh, 2007. He is a graduate of UT Martin and um, the former National Parks Service interpretive specialist. Um, Randy is one of the most sought after interpretive specialists in the Southeast of the United States. And if, if you don't know what that is, um, they make our visits to the park more memorable. They use sound and video and photos and other means to make park tours interesting and informative. Uh, a park interpretive specialist explains the historical relationship uh, that occurs between humans, animals, and plants. Um, but tonight, he's just going to tell us all about Mac Pritchard. And he knew him for many years, so it'll be uh, wonderful to hear his stories about Mac Pritchard. So I'm going to pass the screen sharing over to Randy. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh... Talking about Mac is something that I never uh, refused to do because he was a mentor and a friend uh, and an inspiration uh, for me uh, from an early, early day. And um, I thought about what I was gonna do for this program. And, you know, I could, I could talk about the environmental uh, conservation organizations that he started. Uh, it would be easier to list the ones he didn't have a, a hand in founding really, because he's involved in most of them. Uh, about the only one that I can come up with that he didn't have anything uh, to do with founding was the TOS, the Tennessee Ornithological Society, which was founded way before he was born. So he couldn't have had anything to do with founding that one. Uh, but uh, he had a hand in just about all the others, including uh, the Tennessee uh, Sierra Club. Uh, he grew up in West Tennessee. Uh, most of you know the, the facts of his life. Uh, raised in Dyersburg and in Memphis, and his parents were outdoors people, and his dad took him fishing and hunting and taught him all about the natural world uh, as a child, and um, he went to college at Southwestern, which is a pretty prestigious school. It's now called the Rhodes College, and he went on and got a, a master's degree at Tulane in anthropology uh, in the 1960s. And to me, this, this picture here kind of screams uh, 1960s, uh, <laughs> the style and all. Uh, it's Mac uh, celebrating, uh, taking a self-portrait uh, with the, uh, the magazine from the newspaper, the Sunday paper magazine, uh, featuring uh, an article about him. He was, he was proud of that. Um, but he told me that what started him in uh, doing conservation work was uh, he was interested in Indians, and he had read about uh, mound groups all over West Tennessee and, and eastern Arkansas. Uh, I was saying that Matt grew up in West Tennessee, and his dad took him to his favorite place, which I think was one of Matt's very favorite places, too, because he talked about it so much, uh, Real Foot Lake. Uh, he took me on a grand tour more than once and showed me wonderful places at uh, Real Foot Lake. Uh, and there are many Indian sites at Real Foot Lake. And when Mac was 15, he told me that he heard about a, a public meeting that was occurring over in Arkansas. So uh, it might be, come as a surprise to some of you that his uh, first uh, foray into conservation work was in Arkansas. But he asked his dad to take him over to Parkin, Arkansas for a a public meeting. It seems that the Indian mound there in Parkin was owned by this fella who was being asked by the highway department to sell him the mound, to sell the mound 
to the highway department so they could use it as fill material for the highway going through the town. And Mac uh, was very upset about this and he wanted to go and speak in favor of preserving the mound. So he told me he asked his dad to take him over there. And when it come his time to speak, he said he stood up and he was terrified. He was scared absolutely to death, but he walked up to the uh, lectern and, and talked about what he had been thinking about all, all those days preparing for it, uh, how they didn't, they're not making any more of these. This is a unique historic uh, thing that we should treasure. And he, he spoke all that way uh, and then went and sat down, relieved that it was over. And then the meeting ended and people were talking and the landowner came over to Mac and said, young man, shook his hand and said, you know, you are right. They are not making any more of these and it is kind of priceless in that way. So I think the highway department can find someplace else to get fill material. I will look work toward preserving this Indian mound. And Mac said he was just thrilled that that had come about. And he's thinking to himself, this is great. I wonder if I can make this a career. And he started pursuing it from that point at 15 years old. Uh, Parkin Mound is a single mound uh, that was visited by Hernando de Soto. Uh, de Soto put up a cross on top of the mound. Uh, it's very historic. It was the capital of a mound group all along St. Francis and uh, its tributary river. And uh, after that public meeting, it was preserved and it became a state park. And here shows the, the mound group uh, that Mac most likely knew all about, uh, the, the park inside being the capital of this group of mound or uh, village areas. When it came that, uh, there were Indian mounds near his home over in Memphis. He went out to see those. And this is called Chukalisa in the T.O. Fuller State Park. Max said he was out there one day and he had visited the mound and he was walking out of the park and he got down into the side ditch in an exposed uh, area of soil and he started looking for artifacts. He knew that they probably not legal to take those out of the park but he was looking to see if there were any exposed down there. And he didn't see anything, but he looked up from the side ditch and there was a park ranger car sitting there with the park manager, Mr. Harris, looking at him. And Max said, uh, hello. And Mr. Harris says, well, what you doing, young fella? And Mac told him, well, uh, I guess I better fess up. I was looking for Indian artifacts uh, in this bare soil here. Mr. Harris says, really? You interested in that sort of thing? And Mac told him, yes, he was. And Mr. Harris rubbed his chin and looked back at him and said, would you like to have a job? I need somebody to talk about the Indian mounds that are over here in the park. And if you've got an interest in that, maybe you can tell people about them. And Mac's first job turned out to be one he won by being in a side ditch, looking for Indian artifacts. Uh, and Chukalisa was one of the places he was interested in preserving. He worked with archeologists uh, on the site there and at other sites in the country, in the uh, state of Tennessee. And if you look to the right, that's Mac crouched down there. And he has one of the patches from the early 1960s park ranger uniform on his shoulder there. I have another picture of that coming up later, but he's uh, involved in the, the dig there at Chukalisa in this photograph. Uh, he was also instrumental in, in preserving the Indian mounds at Pinson, uh, the tallest uh, mount, second tallest mound in the Eastern United States, the Saul's Mound. Uh, I've heard uh, Mr. Lawrence, our, our archeologist say, well, there's a couple that are about that same height. So uh, saying it's the second largest may not be totally true, but it is a an impressive mound for sure. If you've not been to the Pinson Mounds, uh, it's a place that Mac truly loved. Uh, 
another area that he worked hard to save was Mound Bottom, uh, surrounded by the Harpeth River in Cheatham County. Uh, the ceremonial mound you see here uh, had several little mounds around it. Uh, 800 years ago, there was a large village with nearly a thousand people living there. And Mac grew up, uh, drew up plans to have an interpretive center just across the river from Mount Bottom and a bridge over to the archeological site. Uh, that was gonna be the, the way they did it. Uh, tell, tell people about uh, the mounds and its history and then cross the bridge across the river and go see it. Uh, if you look to the right uh, in the photograph, you see the bluff over the river. And on top of that is an Indian petroglyph that is also part of the preserved area there at the mountain bottom. Uh, it's called Mace Bluff because uh, the, the petroglyph is of a, a ceremonial uh, dressed uh, Indian with the sacrificial mace in his hand. Uh, another area that Mac worked on to try to, uh, to save was a ceremonial site down in Coffee County. Uh, the Duck River and the, and the Little Duck River come together around uh, an Indian enclosure. And on June 21st, the mounds that line the side of the entrance going into Old Stone Fort are almost within a degree of perfectly lined up with the summer solstice sunrise. This is a picture that I took of that sunrise, 5.30 in the morning in 2013. After working at Teal Fuller for a while, um, it, Mac became pretty well known for his uh, expertise in uh, talking about Indians and history. So much so that the park manager at Shelby Forest, which became Neiman Shelby Forest State Park later on, uh, called him up and asked him if he would be willing to come up to Shelby Forest and do some programs. And, and Mac said, well, of course, do um, um, you have a group in mind? And he said, yes, these, these garden clubs, these, these garden club ladies want me to lead them on a hike or send a ranger out on a hike with them on their trail. They built this trail over here and it's won a national award and they want somebody to lead them on a nature hike on that trail. So Mac's second job was going up to Shelby Forest and, and taking the, the, the garden club ladies for nature walks. That became uh, very important in Mac's life because those garden club ladies grew to love him. And more than once, when he got in trouble by voicing a concern that wasn't politically correct uh, with the administration, uh, those garden club ladies saved his job a couple of times or more. Uh, so God bless the Garden Club ladies. This is the plaque on the trail that uh, the Garden Club uh, won the award for there at Shelby Forest, the Woodland Trail. After Mac became their guide and their nature walks there, they nominated him for a national award with the Garden Club of America as well. And